Hello, we are ready. Yes. Please. So, давайте я начну по-русски. Сегодня у нас метап для всех, кто делает свой софт. Геймдев, софтвер, SaaS, финтех и прочее. И рассказ будет о том, как защитить свой код, свой софт с помощью новых регуляций, которые сейчас применяются в Европе. Какие есть возможности для защиты своей, для регистрации своей трейдмарк на свой код. Что такое цифровой нотариус и так далее. Об этом нам как раз расскажут ребята из Asus Plus. Это наши партнеры, сервис-провайдеры. Очень качественные, крутые, и они прям в IT шарят-шарят. Шон, тебе слово. Доброе утро. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am uh, Sean Alimov, and I would like to welcome you all to yet another highly informative meetup hosted uh, by Cyprus IT community. If you are currently running a technology-driven business, which involves software development, have we got the right content for you guys? Our topic today is how IT and tech businesses can protect their uh, software. Uh, before we begin, a very quick housekeeping note. Please use the chat box to submit your questions. We will answer as many of them as possible during the Q&A session at the end and respond to you individually after the meetup. If you are viewing this video on demand, uh, refer to our contact information at the end of this uh, uh, video um, and in the descriptions, and we will contact you directly. Uh, so with that uh, out of the way, let's start. Almost 9 billion. That was uh, uh, the figure that Oracle wanted from Google for the unauthorized use Java APIs in Android. Java was originally developed at Sun Microsystems, which was purchased later by Oracle in 2009. A big fat zero, that's what Oracle got from, uh, um, after, uh, from Google after over a decade long battle uh, with the US Supreme Court this year deciding that Google use of APIs was a fair use permitted under copyright laws, therefore no infringement. So if your company develops proprietary software and sells it, uh, uses it for a profit, can it be protected to prevent a competitor from copying it? And I'm delighted to welcome Andreas and Sophocles, uh, who will share the light on this important uh, topic. Our experts have extensive experience in tech and software industry, assisting in various matters related to creating profitable and bankable infrastructures. Great to have you here again with us, huh? Sophocles and Andreas, in your new office. Hi, Sean. Hi, Sean. Hi, Sean. Thank you for the introduction. Welcome, everybody. Actually, with us today, it's myself, Sophocles, and our legal associate, Vasiliki Petru, who is an expert on IP registration. She's here next to me. She, uh, she will take the wheel uh, shortly and explain everything about our uh, second meetup uh, subject on um, how IT and tech businesses can protect their software. Um, after our first meetup, which we discussed the IP box and general tax rules of Cyprus, uh, also um, immigration laws, uh, we have chosen this very interesting subject actually. Uh, it's something uh, that is not new, but there are new developments in the industry. Uh, so how IT and tech businesses protect the software is our subject. Uh, we, consider it, uh, we consider that the protection of intellectual property for the tech business is a must. And uh, this is an extremely valuable asset for every company. Uh, I would like to introduce you, Ms. Vasily Gibetru, our uh, legal associate, expert on uh, intellectual property registrations, along with Mr. Subogliz Mihail. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Hi, I'm Vasily Hello. Uh, I will try to explain all the options and tools uh, 
companies with software has available for the protection of their software. And uh, before we get into the options, I would like to briefly describe uh, what we mean with protection, what we actually mean protection of the software and uh, why it is important. Uh, Sean, you described before the Google case and this is, this is very interesting one. So uh, can we share the screen? Okay. Okay, can you see my screen? Good. So, good. so, uh, so uh, when we when we talk about protection, actually, what it comes to is my, in mind is intellectual property. And intellectual property, it means whatever the mind can create. It, uh, all the creation of the mind, and it can be from a commercial sign, a logo we see on sign, a package, secret recipes, uh, a game character, especially for, for those who are in a game industry, a song, paintings, and computer programs, indeed. So why we should protect our intellectual property, our computer program? especially for tech companies, is the most important asset you have. It's the one you will utilize, is the one uh, responsible for the income of the company. And that is the reason it adds value to the company. Uh, of course, it will protect you from infringement and copying. We all know that software to be developed, it requires time, it's complex and uh, cost, but it's very easy to copy. And uh, of course, there are forms of uh, software protection we will see later on. It forms part of the marketing. It's how people know you as a company. It distinguish your products and sales. And this is a trademark protection you, we will see later on. And of course, all of the above, it gives a strong market position for the company and a competitive advantage. So this is a brief introduction. So uh, I guess it's the time to move on to the options available. Today, I choose to talk about four. It's copyrights. It's the trademark registration, the YPO proof, and the patent. So let's start with the first one, which is the copyrights. I guess all of you have seen this symbol before in e-commerce, websites, books, and legally copyrights, it, it defines the rights the owner of, that have over their literary, artistic, and scientific work. This is a legal definition provided by the Berne Convention in 1881, and it was the latest revision was in 1971. Imagine it's a convention that was created predated software era. And in 1994, the legislators come and said, this is a digital era. We have computer programs. How can we protect our computers? And then they clearly express in their international agreement that computer programs are expressly protected as literary works and by literary works we mean computer programs the software are protected like a book a painting a song it's a written work and so this is a general legal definition let's go to the application of the of the copyrights to the software how can developers can make sure that their software is protected the copyright is an automatic right. As long as the code is created, it's protected automatically. But two requirements shall be satisfied. And the one is originality. 
Originality is not a, a term that is actually defined, but uh, various courts, European courts, have said that originality is just to prove that the authors, the one that created this, it owned the intellectual creation. And especially in the, in, the, in the software development, this is very easy to be satisfied because you need labor, you need skilled person, and, uh, and, and just and judgment. And this is the so-called research and development, the R&D element, I'm pretty sure developers know, know this. So originality, it's easy to prove. The second one is the expression. Copyrights only protect expression and not ideas. And what we mean by this, it's as you see it. The copyright protection, everything that is recorded, everything that is written, not ideas, as simple as it is. So what is applicable to the, to the uh, software? Even though the, the, the computer program is not defined, there are elements that are not protected. So I make a table here uh, and we can see what is protected and what is not. So the first is the source, source code and object code. This is original, this is written, and this is expressly protected by copyrights. On the other hand, ideas, procedures that underlie the computer programs are not protected because they are not expressed. It's just ideas. User, user manual is protected. Oops. Mm, sorry. User manual. The user manual is a, a, a document, a combination of keywords, commands, options, defaults. All this um, uh, in, includes the expression, the individual expression of uh, of the developer, and therefore satisfies originality and the expression requirement. On the other hand, logic, algorithms, and programming language are not protected. Again, for the reason they are not original, they are principles. Preparatory design work that will lead to the subsequent creation of the program, again, is protected, even though it's not the final product. On the other hand, functionality is not protected. And this is a very, a very nice topic we can discuss. Um, we will see this later on in the patent, uh, and then developer may proceed with the software development set. This functional is uh, it's unique, it's uh, of the program. So why I cannot protect it with copyrights? You cannot protect it because they decided that protection of the functionality, it will be an obstacle to the technology advancement. It, they say that they will monopolize ideas and it will be uh, a problem for the, for the uh, development of technologies. And for that, for that reason, this is excluded for copyright. However, it can be patented. If it satisfies the patent requirements, we will see later on. Application and operating systems are protected. Graphical user interfaces are not as software. However, they can protect it as a normal copyrights. So this is a table, many of what elements of copyrights are protected and which are not. However, as we mentioned, copyright is an automatic right. And as long as you have the code written, it's protected. Uh, to, for further protection, it's important to have in place the correct agreements the development agreements, your license agreements, your employment agreements, non-disclosure agreements. So by this, you make sure who owns the rights of the specific software. Can I just jump in here? Yes. Uh, just to kind of understand. So while the advantage of copyright is that protection is automatic and free of charge, as long as uh, work is original, Yes. The reliance on copyright as a sole protection system only safeguard, uh, let's put it, uh, against the literal copying of the source or the object code. 
it does not protect the underlying invention uh, implemented by the uh, software. Am I understanding this correctly? It's correct. Yes, it's correct. It, the copyrights protect what is written in an in, in a original individual way and developer uh, uses specific commands and uh, a sequence to create a code. The source code, which is understandable by a skilled person, and the object code, which is the binary. So this, the original creation, it's protected because it's unique. It's the developer's own uh, way of, of, right, of the code. The functionality, which is the one you're referring to, the invention behind, this is not protected. And why it's not protected? Because usually the software development depends on incremental steps. It's more steps that legally the courts say that this is, um, this is foreseeable and a reasonable skilled person like a developer can foresee it. So it does not satisfy the invention criteria. It's, it's not inventive, it's not novel which is the criteria of the patent to be protected. That is the reason copyrights are protected, uh, the software is protected mainly by copyrights. Okay. Is it? Let's move on with the... Okay. Because later on, we, uh, so we're going to describe the four types of protection. Sure, sure. Let's, let's, and let's we move on. put everything in, in SPR and we come back to specific questions regarding copyrights. Okay. Very, okay. very interesting, yeah. Because this is correlated, mm -hmm. the copyright is correlated with the newly introduced uh, protection through white code mm -hmm. registration, which is uh, number three in our list, which is the most interesting part of our conversation today, actually. Okay, let's move to the option number two, which is that Trademark and trademark is something interesting and fun actually. Uh, what is trademark? Trademark is a sign that distinguishes the, the, the goods and services of one business from one from those of another. And this is mainly the logo. It's how you sell your product uh, to the market. And uh, when we see many, co uh, many uh, tech companies and computer software companies using the trademark to protect their products because most probably the software is related to a business, an industry. And what can consist a trademark? Trademark can be anything actually, especially with the new updates. It can be a word, colors, numbers, symbols, even sounds, taste, and smell. Yes, you can register taste and smell. So it gives a wide range of choices to register a trademark. And I say register because trademark is not automatic. You need to register. And uh, there are four ways you can register your trademark. Either the one is national. National, we mean in the place your business is, you register your trade, your logo. It's how the customers see you and distinguish you. The, the second one is the regional level, which includes only Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg. The third one is the European, which is European trademark registration is very important because with one single registration, you can protect your trademark in all member states. And the fourth one is the international level, which is made via white code, and you can choose the uh, countries you wish to register your trademark based on where your business is related to. And uh, this is again is doing via the white code. So um, this is the fourth ways. And uh, since trademarks need the registration, the owner's rights on this trademark is territorial. It means you have the right in the jurisdiction, you register your trademark. So what are the characteristics of the trademark? Are two. The one is to be distinctive, it has to be unique. And the second one is not to be deceptive. 
Deceptive, we mean it should not describe the goods and services of your business. And I have a very easy example here, uh, here which is Apple. Apple is a computer program company, yes? And they use the Apple as trademarks. Apple is unique because Apple, the company, has nothing to do with Apple. But if the same um, trademark was, was about to be used by a company that sells actual Apple, then we cannot be protected. Is the easiest example to understand the trademark. Um, so, what is interesting here is that the European Union this year, 2021, issued a, a grant scheme, 20 million for SME companies, small medium enterprises, for the registration of their trademarks on European level. And um, by this fund, each company can get up to 1,500 euros um, against the registration, the trademark registration fee. Uh, there are five window applications. The two have already finished, they have been completed. And we have three more, which is in May, the whole May, the whole July, and the whole September. And it's and it's based on come, first come, first serve basis. So I urge all tech companies out there, and not tech companies, all the companies out there to, to use this fund because it's only for this year. And um, this for, is just to understand why it's so important. Even so Europe, important, European yes. Union is giving a subsidy and grant to help companies to register their, their trademark. Very important this. And I mean, all business which have the opportunity, they should do this actually in the next two months when we yes. have the window open for the subsidy. And we will see that there are a lot of competitions out there, especially with tech companies. And uh, um, so they, they do this so they can protect startups as well. Because if you do not protect your software, you will not have a position in the market. And this is for sure. Uh, you, I have the link also here if you want to read this about yourselves and get an idea. Of course, we can provide further information later on. So this is all about trademark. This is the, more time, the important things for the trademark. And I would like to move on to the, the white proof, the one Sophocles mentioned before. This is a very, very new tool and not many people know about it actually. It's very new. And what is it? It's very simple. It's an online service provided by the World Intellectual Property Organization. And you can protect your code with a digital file you, down, you, you upload this and you get a token and at the specific time of the, of, of the, of the uh, upload, you know that the specific day and time such code existed and it was owned by the specific company person. So if we go back to copyrights, we said that it's automatic. Yes, but in case of dispute arise, what happened? How can you prove that this code is owned by me and this business? This is a very easy, straightforward, cost-effective procedure. You download the file and it's, and, and, and it's protected immediately. You can get a verification certificate by WIPO and, uh, uh, and it's, it's, it's immediately. You download it and it's it, then you have evidence of your of your uh, software uh, um, quickly. Uh, it's pretty simple as it sounds, actually. Um, so this is the third one. Very important in combination with the copyright and with trademark, we consider that a company, a tech and IT company, would be really secure 
by taking all the three steps mentioned by Vasiliki already. Very important. Uh, let's move on with the, the fourth one, which is not so popular, just to mention it. And we, so we can get into more interaction with you and, and the participants for questions. Okay. So the fourth one is patterns. And why I mentioned patterns here? Because of the functionality issue we mentioned before. Patent offers the strongest level of protection on software. And generally, it's intellectual property, but it has very strict requirements. It shall be novel, it shall be inventive, and should provide a technical solution. And usually, this is not satisfied by computer programs for the reason I mentioned before. However, there are cases that you can protect your computer program under patent if it's an invention related to a computer program. So it must be a computer related invention. It should be an invention to be unique, novel invention and provide a technical solution based on a software application. That is the reason patent is difficult to uh, apply for a software. And I mentioned here because a lot of clients come and say, patent my software, patent my code, patent my application, patent this. It's important to distinguish that a lot of tools are available for a software and everything depends on what the business offering and what is doing. So these are the four uh, um, tools I chose to present to you today, simple to the point, and we can, uh, we can um, receive questions for any of the four or anything else that comes to mind. Um, of course, we, we can assist all clients to set up their strategy, to advise based on, the, on their products, what are the possible intellectual property rights they can register. We can advise on trademarks, find the trademark application, prepare their agreement, do the IP audit, which refers to the value of the uh, software, and proceed with the white proof upload and preparation of the digital file. So that's it for me. That's uh, very good uh, uh, presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Vasily K. Can you come back to the uh, uh, slide which talks about the patterns uh, while yes. our audience uh, getting ready to submit the question? Uh, so, so do I understand it correctly? As long as a computer program is technical, uh, the medium in which it is recorded is relevant and is in fact patentable. Is that, is that, is that correct? Is that, eh? Is that correct? For the patent. As long as a computer program is technical. It, it should be novel and by novel we mean unique. It, it didn't happen before. It should be inventive and it should be to provide a technical solution to a problem. These are the three requirements of the patent and they are very strict requirements. So if these three requirements are satisfied and that invention, let's call it invention, because if it's patent and it's an invention, is based on a computer program, then only, only then your computer program can be patented. And there are jurisdictions that are specifically exclude cop um, the software from patents. So, so if it's uh, in the US, uh, patent protection for software related invention would be limited to the certain extent uh, compared to the one in Europe maybe, or yes. I don't know, in, Japan's in Europe, uh, patent act. In Europe, there are cases 
that uh, computer programs can be accepted as patent, provided that the, the, they satisfy the three criteria I mentioned before. We have seen some court cases. Okay. I am encouraging our audience to submit the questions, even if it's in Russian, we, I'd be happy to translate uh, to our um, uh, to our panel of experts. Uh, feel free to do so. Um, so how's it relating to, uh, to uh, companies uh, that willing to register their IP in, um, uh, in Cyprus, for example? Um, or the company like sort of a setting up the shops here in Cyprus. Is that something that you can assist them with? Uh, to... Actually, Cyprus is uh, it's a member of the Madrid Protocol. What is Madrid Protocol? Is all the all the all the countries that have signed to the harmonization of trademark registration. And, mm -hmm. and by this, you can use, we from Cyprus, we can advise clients and register their trademarks all over the world. This is, uh, this is very, very important. And uh, we also have harmonized European directives into our national law. So um, and, uh, that is the reason. It, and from Cyprus, you can also register your trademark on a European level with just single registration. So uh, what is provided is it's very straightforward. You don't need to look for, um, I'm working in Ukraine, I'm working in Greece, I'm working in Germany, uh, I'm going to a German lawyer, I'm going to a Ukrainian lawyer. And it's very simple. And of course, we can provide all the expenses related in advance. So the client will know what would be the cost for this, either on European level, national, or, live, or even international level. It, it will be one package of faith. Uh, okay. So coming to your question, uh, I would say that is one of the many steps that a company relocating to Cyprus to you that it is advisable to, to take a uh, apart from production, also for their audit, uh, the balance sheet, uh, we need a verification of the software. So we described some steps that companies can do and verify the ownership uh, upon uh, acquisition of their softwares or development of their softwares. So they need to think about it uh, from the beginning, from the get-go. No, no, specifically. Okay, let's get to the questions from the audience. Eh? Uh, Alina, I'll start with you. Uh, can you describe uh, the process of uh, WIPO proof submission? Is it sophisticated? What are the fees? The YPO proof. Okay. And the Okay, so why pure proof? It's not sophisticated, uh, but a lawyer should do it. And we create a digital file, you upload it through the YPO website, and you get a token. It's protected with a, with a hash, a fingerprint, and anytime you can issue a certificate uh, as a evidence that at the specific time you had this uh, code submitted by the specific business. What are the fees? The, uh, the fees we can, the client may contact us directly and see what are their business, what they have, uh, and depending on the, on the asset, we will advise the fees because expenses are also uh, included. Okay, understood. Uh, Christina, um, uh, is it possible to apply for TM registration if I'm not a sole proprietor and not uh, an NLC? I am uh, an individual who has its own project. 
is it possible to apply for trademark registration? Of course, of course. Either a, a legal or a physical person can apply uh, can apply for a trademark registration. For the trademark registration, we have several classes for goods and services, and depending what are what Christina is selling, is it providing services? Is it selling goods? Then. Uh, we will, we will, the, the procedure is we will do a preliminary research on what trademarks is, exist to the moment in this specific business and whether there are similar similarities with already registered trademarks with the one that is proposed. And, and if it's not, then we can proceed and register the trademark either on legal or physical person. There is no restriction on this. Okay, I like uh, also Alisa's question. Can an offshore company, BVI Dominica, be the owner of the trademark which is registered worldwide in Europe, your United States, etc.? Uh, I need to see whether BVI is a member of the Madrid Protocol. Uh, I'm not sure if it is. Uh, I need to check if it is. Yes, we can use the international system to do the application. If it's not, then you, you need to go to the specific uh, countries you wish to register your trademark and make the application from there. This is the difference. I can check whether BVI is part of this if you want to, but I will need one, two minutes to do so. Uh, but this is how it goes. It doesn't mean if you are not a, a party to this treaty, you cannot. But it's it's the procedure. Vasiliki, naturally, the topic of this meetup has attracted attention of the legal uh, representative of some UBOs and also uh, the legal expert. So we quickly come back to Alina's uh, question about uh, uh, WIPO proof. Uh, she is a lawyer herself, and. Uh, will she be able to do it herself to do the submission uh, or would uh, would she need to be uh, hiring um, um, like a, a law company like no yourself? no 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 she can do it of course she can do it she can are, do it are there any itself. set fees for the uh, uh, WIPO regis uh, submission registration apart from your uh, there service? Are, there are is I don't know then uh, I don't remember how much is it however if she can check on his own via the the link, the link. I, I have put the link in the slide so she can she can ah let's go um, this is the link no this no. is not this uh, ah I don't have the we link. can release I, we, I can, can send we can release the link following our uh, our conversation, we can release the link. So the well, one of the prepared, participants yeah. actually uh, uh, helping us out. Thank you, Oleg uh, Schwaske. Uh, WIPO fees uh, may be calculated easily via their website. Okay. Uh, question from Tony. If the software is developed not in Cyprus, uh, but in another EU country, and was provided to a Cyprus entity under R&D agreement. Can a Cyprus entity register a patent copyright in it on European level? Okay, so, yes. The answer is yes, but let's go back and say, if in depending on the agreement between the developer and the Cyprus company, that is the reason agreements are important. If the specific, specific agreements have clauses and provide and safeguarding the uh, economic rights over this software, who owns this software at the end? Then if such rights are, has been transferred with this agreement on the Cyprus company, then yes, the Cyprus company can proceed with the patent if the software and the invention satisfy the criteria I mentioned before. So it's very important to have clear documents that show who owns the economic rights of 
the software because at the end it's we are talking about economic rights and who, who can utilize and who can sell and license the software. It's very common that we see IT companies that they are headquartering through Cyprus and they developing their software through different teams, not, not in Cyprus. And we have actual cases that such softwares can be uh, eligible for the WIPO proof, they can be considered all ownership of the Cyprus companies. So they are covered both by copyright and the WIPO proof. I have noticed, I don't know, uh, some uh, experts claim that uh, R&D expenditure associated with uh, developing some software related invention is not the same as that for other technology field. Eh? Uh, but I think in my opinion, uh, uh, many inventions, uh, I don't know, like when I worked in uh, oil and gas sector, like systems to, they improve uh, energy efficiency, uh, I don't know, maybe safety solutions of some sort. They take years to research, to develop, and commercialize. Huh? Not sure if we understand your question, so <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a question. It's a statement. It's a it's a it's it's a statement. Uh, okay. I, I think uh, when it comes to software uh, patterns, again, maybe some people say that they could be of a low quality. Um, and they could effectively grant protection to what's known as mathematics, I'd imagine. Uh, but the copyright and trade secret provide adequate and substantial IP protection for, for that software. The, the, the gold line here is the one that I mentioned before. The, the, the legislators take some decisions that it, that it might be uh, sounds a little bit weird, but because we are talking about technology advancement and development on a very fast pace, uh, protection is allowed as long as the advancement to the general public is not uh, stopped because of protection to specific things that it will not allow further development. This is a contradiction mm. about yeah. the research and development and I only can protect my software under copyright and not under patent. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's a question for you then. So uh, coming back to the case between uh, Oracle and Google, um, if your program uh, is as big as Java, uh, it will be imitated. And um, if the one that wants to imitate it uh, has deep pocket, as was clearly in this case, I think you can be uh, in for a rough ride. Huh? Uh, sorry, I didn't hear actually. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> No, I'm just I, I'm just saying that if it's uh, coming back to the case of Oracle and yes. Google, yes, uh, yeah, that's 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 you know you you have to keep in mind that if if the program is as big as Java, yeah, it it, it will be imitated, isn't it? Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Uh, there are so, a lot of tools you can use actually. A lot of there are cases that you may have protection without registering anything. And why? Because of the good marketing you are doing. And because people and users can identify you uh, without doing anything. There are cases like this. So it's, it, it very depends on case by case. And very also depends on the legality of your agreement. That's the reason it's on case by case, because if you have the correct uh, documents in place, then everything is fine. Very important is the legality of your agreements. And that includes license agreement, I'd imagine, as well, isn't it? Uh, what agreement? License. License agreement. Licensing, development agreements. Employment and agreements. Even employment agreements. All type of agreements that secure the company. 
so, so uh, if you have any other, no other questions, uh, happy to answer it. Or, uh, we can thank Vasily G for this nice topic. Yeah, thank you very much, Vasily G. Thank you. Very clearly explained. Good to have you on a uh, on a panel, huh? It's nice to thank meet you so you much. <laughs> thank you, Oleg. Thank you. <laughs> Hope you find the topic interesting. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, друзья, если как раз вам нужны контакты, контакты Asus Plus, Asus Plus на экране. И запись будет выложена немножечко позднее, думаю, сегодня вечером или завтра утром. Tomorrow morning we will uh, posting is uh, recording. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.